Hi guys, Ricky Pope here, and this week on the Christian Nerd Unite podcast, I talk with Marcus Pittman and Jason Farley from Lore TV, a new streaming platform aimed at Christians and conservative young adult male viewers, plus scripture and nerdy news, and we'll get to all of that right after this. Hey guys, this is Ashley Cox from Fangirling Over Jesus. At FOJ, we believe in hope and light in the darkness and that you are not alone. We seek to unite and celebrate the intersection of the gospel and our favorite fandoms, and we get to do this through our social media, our podcast devotional, and our cosplay and fashion. And you can find links to all of that through our website, www.fangirlingoverjesus.com, through our social media, at Fangirling Over Jesus, wherever you get your podcasts, and on Etsy. See you online. Thank you so much for joining me every week. Uh, Christian Nerd Unite is now part of the Christian Nerd HQ Podcast Network. The network releases content every single weekday. Christian Nerd Unite on Mondays, Tatooine Sons on Tuesdays, Fangirling Over Jesus on Wednesdays, The Reverend and the Reprobate on Thursdays, and The Speaking Nerdy Podcast every Friday. Make sure you go to ChristianNerdHQ.com to follow all of the podcasts and check out the Christian Nerd HQ YouTube channel for exclusive content we're making together. We'll be live streaming June 17th at 10 a.m. Central to talk about The Flash. Make sure you tune in. Now, let's read some scripture. 1 Chronicles 16, 8 through 11. Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wondrous acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. I really love this passage. It talks about making the Lord known, sharing the gospel. It is the way I would interpret that. And those who are seeking the Lord. I work weekly with indigenous believers in hard countries who are sharing the gospel, helping them locate seekers and then meet them face to face, using the word of God in their native tongue to show them who Jesus is. It's amazing to see God moving in these areas that I will never get to visit. People are seeking peace, seeking love, and seeking faith all around the world. The Holy Spirit is active in the world, and it's our job to connect and share the gospel with these people. I can't do it all by myself, but I can help train others to do it. My prayer is that you will consider how you can share your faith with those around you. If you'd like to help us support those indigenous works in those hard places, go to findinggodonline.com slash partner. Now for some nerdy news. This weekend, Transformers Rise of the Beast topped the box office with an okay showing of over 60 million domestically, just barely beating out last week's winner, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, coming in at a second place at $55 million for its second weekend. Uh, The new Transformers movie did much better than the last two outings for the franchise, hitting a worldwide total of $170 As usual, the critics and the audiences did disagree. Uh, With Rotten Tomatoes critics' scores of only 52%, but an audience score of 91%. Marketing for the upcoming Flash movie is in full swing. Warner Brothers has set up special screenings for critics and to get responses from Hollywood. Rotten Tomatoes critics score is 71% with over 100 critics checking in. One thing that is missing is Ezra Miller. Press events have focused on the director, Andy Muschietti, producer, Barbara Muschietti, 
and Supergirl actress Sasha Cali. And red carpet events are said to be fan events, which generally means that the stars will walk the carpet, but won't take media interviews. The Flash opens this weekend, and Christian Nerd HQ will be doing a live stream to talk about the movie this Saturday. The Disney Plus Star Wars series Ahsoka will release on Wednesday, August 23rd. Ahsoka, played by Rosario Dawson, will be joined by Lars Mikkelsen as Grand Admiral Thrawn and Iman Isfandi as Ezra Bridger. Many are saying this feels like a live-action Season 5 of Star Wars Rebels with Ahsoka searching for Thrawn and hoping to save Ezra. This week, I interviewed Marcus and Jason from Lore TV, a new streaming service that just launched. Now, Marcus and Jason share why they started the service and what you can expect. Let's get right into our interview. Marcus and Jason, it is so great to have you guys on the Christian Nerds Unite podcast today. Thanks for having us. Excited to be here. Yeah, excited. So you guys have started a, uh, a a TV channel of sorts, a streaming service called L Lore TV. And tell us a little bit about what Lore TV is and, and why you guys started this. Yeah, so uh, I was, I've always been heavily involved in Christian media to some degree or whatnot. And I got, um, I, I was head of video production for the ad agency that did all of Pure Flix is advertising, so and I built a YouTube Christian YouTube studio and, and that sort of thing. So I've always been involved, and I just always thought that Christian movies were really terrible. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's a, a a strange thought, but always did. And I made a movie, a, a pro life film, and it was we put it on Amazon Prime, had a giant billboard up advertising it and everything, and Amazon removed it. And I was like, okay, we have a real problem when it comes to Christian films, because the good ones aren't going to the typical Christian streaming platforms. And then if we do something any, even slightly controversial or edgy uh, uh, from the Christian worldview perspective on the secular outlets, they're not going to have it either. So we had a, a massive funding and distribution problem for filmmakers. Um, and so that's what... That's what led me to Lore. Um, we, we basically said, what happens if you merged Kickstarter and Netflix together? Um, and that's sort of what happened. And, and that's what we built. And the way it works uh, just uh, is, is the monthly subscribers get to spend their monthly subscription using basically in-game currency we call loot. Um, and you can spend that loot and allocate your monthly subscription towards funding movies and TV shows that'll be on the platform. So the community is coming together, and I like to say it's a massive multiplayer online RPG where the horde is coming together and just building a streaming platform together as a community. That's the game. That, that That's fascinating. So you're, you're kind of democratizing what is on the the channel and what might be created for the channel is that kind of the way it works yeah exactly we like to say that uh, everything is crowdfunded it's just a question of who controls the crowd's funds and so <laughs> what what we're doing is showing that if you put the if you put the power into the hands of the people then they'll actually pick the things they want to see made and it's not mm. going to be the sort of stuff that's picked for them, whether it's, you know, the, um, because they just don't want something that's a propaganda piece, or mm -hmm. if it's because they want something that, um, recognizes them and sees them, um, and isn't just about, you know, the cool kids table. Very cool. So when, when something, you know, when you're looking for content, what kind of things are you considering before you, either put it on the, the platform or put it up for the crowdfunding portion. Yeah. So what I'm looking for are two things. One is somebody that has a really great story um, mm. that they're really excited to tell. And mm. So on the one hand, it's a story that really has a great hook. That's really going to serve a particular audience. That's, that's really excited uh, that a story I'm really excited about. And then somebody that has the experience as the filmmaker um, so I look at what have they made before, what 
mm-hmm. and you know have they proven themselves as a storyteller and then do mm-hmm. they have a great story to tell i don't worry about what genre it is um because i think christians should be working in every genre and making a, a telling good stories in every genre like you mentioned before not everybody's excited about for example horror but um, there are Christians that have a great horror story to tell. Uh, and we know that that's okay because you've got stories like the man amongst the tombs in the gospels that would be a horrifying mo- uh, thing to see. I'm curious how they're going to do it when they come to it in the chosen. Um, I hope they get a good horror director for that episode. Uh, well, but every genre is a genre that a Christ- that Christians should be redeeming and use and using for their storytelling. And uh, so I, what I'm looking for is just the really great stories, really great concepts that somebody that's a proven storyteller um, brings to me. Okay. So and you're, you're also looking for content that isn't uh, that other streaming platforms, faith-based streaming platforms would never accept. Mm, right. Okay. <laughs> right? So just the stuff that's like, like, like barely biblical as an example of that. Uh, me and Jason were at uh, a pitchathon, and a pitchathon is where all these filmmakers come and they pitch stuff. Mm-hmm. And this was at a Christian film festival, and he came to us and said, basically, uh, I I didn't know you guys were going to be here, <laughs> or I would have prepared a better pitch. But now that you're here, you're the only people I can pitch this to. And he just drew a teddy bear on a napkin. This guy works for Phineas and Ferb, and he's an animator for, for Mickey Mouse and all this sort of stuff. Um, and, and he says, uh, I just want to do a show where animated teddy bears reenact the most violent Old Testament Bible stories. Um, and we couldn't stop thinking about it. <laughs> we were just, like, every, other, every other pitch after that was just a typical faith-based pitch. And then as soon as the people would leave, we would just start talking between us about how amazing Barely Biblical <laughs> is. And, uh, and, and so that's a, that's a project you can fund now um, if you, if you want to see animated teddy bears reenacting the most violent Old Testament Bible stories. It's fantastic. It's a throwback to just the classic Looney Tunes violence that we use, you know, when Elmer Fudd used to have an actual gun. Like those sort of things, you know, we, that's, cartoons used to be violent. Um and so it's a perfect medium for going over those Old Testament Bible stories. And nobody would take it. Um, no, but nobody would even give him an audience. And I think it's going to be a huge hit that rivals VeggieTales. That's my prediction. So, Yeah. And we have in other shows, you know, uh, Joseph Granda, Christian actor, comedian, he's got a, a show called Breaking Laws with Joseph Granda where he travels the country breaking the most ridiculous laws he can find and then turning himself in with the evidence and seeing what the police do. Right. That, um, <laughs> and then going to a pastor and asking, did I break Romans 13? Right. And so really <laughs> he's just a funny, funny guy and with a great concept and it doesn't really fit anywhere. Um, and that's mm. what we're looking for stuff that doesn't fit other places except for it's the stuff that the audience really wants to see the same sort of way that early HBO, early MTV, early Cartoon Network, early Nickelodeon really just focused in and worried about serving the audience and didn't worry about uh, anything except for that. That's awesome. So why you, you talked a little bit about this, but give me a little bit more. Why do you feel like lore is needed and, and why is right now the right time? Well, I, I think the, the main reason is because the entire Christian media industry, the, we call it the Christian media industrial complex, whatever you want to call it, the Christian media industry, uh, was started uh, because they were trying to sell products to the people who shopped at Christian bookstores, right? So mm-hmm. the big period in the 80s to 90s, 2000s, uh, where you had Christian bookstores everywhere. They were in the mall, all mm-hmm. these sort of things. Um, so m- all all of all of music, all of our movies, all of our books and publishing, that was all geared towards who shopped at those bookstores, um, mm. and that turned out to be thirty-five year old soccer moms. Um, and so it's just a fact. All of our Christian movies and the, media and music are, is all for women, um, and that's why. Um, and and that so, is that is actually something that has been propagated through all sorts of media because the the comment in the filmmaking industry is always that 
the, the 35 year old soccer mom, she's the one who buys the movie tickets. Right. And that's part of the reason we see PG 13 movies or PG and PG 13 movies hit 500,000 and a million dollars where uh, 500,000 and a billion dollars where R rated movies never get past their opening weekends rarely if ever get past that hundred million dollar mark passion of the christ did <laughs> yes it did it did yeah right? but the but the reality is the, the she's not the one making the streaming decisions in the home and mm. and you know the dads are the ones that decide what streaming platform they they the the family has even though the mom decides you know what movies they go out and see Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And, and I would also add that um, if kids want to see something bad enough, the mom will buy it. Uh, but you don't <laughs> see, you don't see children begging for a Pure Flix subscription, right? <laughs> you don't see it happening. Um, so if you make good enough content, the parents will come because that's what the kids want to see. And so we're trying to make content for younger people, uh, whether it's kids or teenagers or younger men. Um, uh, you know, we like to say we we like. We're making content for men, young men who don't want to see strangers naked, um, right? Mm. Like that's the sort of content we're making, um, and and I think there's a huge market for that, and nobody's mm. even tested the idea. Why do you think right now is the right time? Do you want this one, Marcus? You can do it. Okay, uh, because. The most of Hollywood and uh, whether and the Christian movies have stopped um, seeing at least fifty percent of the audience. Right in Hollywood, if you're conservative, they act like you don't exist, and in the Christian marketplace, if you're a man, they act like you don't exist. And so we figure if we try to serve conservative men with great content, then um, we're going to be the only ones doing it, which gives us a huge advantage over everyone else who has Hmm. to pretend like conservative men don't exist. Um, But they do. So we're trying to make content for conservative men and their sons, Christian, conservative uh, men that just want great stories told that recognize that they exist and that there's a place for them in the world. And so more and more um, young men uh, feel like there isn't a place for them in the world because everybody acts like if they if they're there then they're a threat, rather than mm-hmm. saying hey there's a there's a God has a good place that He intends for you to be in this world, and uh, so we're trying to make content that reflects the reality of the way God made the world, uh, that God has a good plan for men, um, a good plan for boys to grow up and be men, and um, that's a message that has been lost um, by everyone else making content right now. Mm. And and you guys said, you know, you're looking at some edgier content. Um, what what kind of boundaries do you look at? Well, the the rules that we have for our filmmakers are no nudity on the platform and no blasphemy on the platform. And then mm. we're trying to find the filmmakers that are Christians that we can just say love God and make what you want. Don't worry about what not what you what you have to avoid. Worry about what's the the story that you have to tell and tell it the best way that you can. Um, and so that and that frees up, um, especially you know in comedy that that gives freedom. Um, we've got a, a a show called or a, a movie called The Lesbian and the Lumberjack about a woman who thinks she's a lesbian, but it turns out she's just never met a real man. Um, and it's just a satirical rom com about a. Uh, Portland's lesbian whose car breaks down on the side of the road and a lumberjack helps fix the car and it throws everything in out of whack because uh, um, all of the quote unquote men in her life turn out to not be very masculine and and when she meets a real masculine man it it becomes a rom com so um, that but that that's sort of the, the freedom to be able to tell a story like that that's really funny that's just that's trying to be silly and the kind of thing, but, but also trying to tell a real truth in a world like today, um, you wouldn't, wouldn't find a place normally. And so we, instead of thinking in terms of what we don't allow, we try and find filmmakers that really aren't interested in pushing the moral edges on things, but are interested instead Hmm. of telling stories that, um, that reflect what 
the the truth and reflect the beauty and the goodness of the truth. Very cool. Now, now you guys are 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 just launching this. Um, yeah. Are are you are you are people bringing you content because they know about it, or are you mostly searching out the content right now? Yeah. So uh, we are. One of the things I think that makes us really different is we're searching for the content. Right. So um, everybody is looking to spend a hundred million dollars, uh, and they're and, and 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 part of their plan to spend that hundred million dollars building up that content and stuff is having people come to them. Right. But what me and me and Jason, we get travel and we go to the comedy clubs. We go to the underground comedy clubs. We we try to find these uh, Christians who, whether they're working in Hollywood and they're keeping their face down. Or they're working in the Christian film industry and they're just, you know, making what they have to make to provide. And we're trying to find them and free them. Um, so a lot of it is scouting. Um, but we also have a, on our on our website too. If, uh, you can, you, if you have a, if you have a project or an idea, you can fill out the form and and we'll contact you um, if we're interested. Um, so there's there, there's a lot of ways we're finding people, but finding people is really how you change the culture. Um, you know, anybody can take a lot of money and hire a star that's already made it in Hollywood and bring them over to the conservative mm-hmm. side. That's, that's not hard to do. But what we're looking for is the real underground punk rock, uh, independent artsy filmmakers that nobody will, will give any attention to and make them famous, right? Like mm-hmm. that's, that's really how MTV got started how Cartoon Network, Adult Swim got started with Room uh, Channel 101, right, with the original cartoons that were on Channel 101 and all these sort of things. It's all about finding those underground artists, and that's what we want. There's no market in the Christian space until Lore got there uh, that would that would cater towards those uh, rebel filmmakers. And so one of the things we do is we uh, we hosted artist events in in Nashville, and we did one in Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to do one in Orlando um, at the end of May, which which is probably passed by the time this podcast is up. And then we're going to do one, uh, hopefully in June, in Atlanta and New York. Uh, so I'd be uh, paying attention to the Watch Lore Twitter and Facebook page to uh, for for any updates on those if we're doing one in New York and Atlanta. But that that's the plan. Yeah. Very nice. What um. Who are you working with right now? Are, are there any names that you can share with us and say, you know, these are some of the creators that we're bringing on that maybe somebody might recognize or maybe they don't recognize, but they need to keep an eye open for them? Well, there's definitely some you should start keeping an eye out for. Um, we've got guys like Tim Ingle and Joel Burris and Joseph Granda. And, um, but some that you might have heard of are the Twitch streamer Gothics. She's a... Um, a phenomenal personality she's she um streams video games um and the the story um that she that the movie about her is that is telling is when she um just basically questioned the the orthodoxy of whether or not it has to be racism if you don't like the casting of the new little mermaid <laughs> and she's a, a black uh black uh, video game Twitch streamer and all of a sudden started being called all sorts of names that nobody should mm-hmm. ever be called and got canceled, lost her whole business, her career, everything. Um, and uh, in the process ended up becoming conservative, becoming a Christian and learning, um, learning that she was a part of a machine that she didn't realize she was a part of. Um, and mm-hmm. so that's an amazing, amazing movie. Uh, uh, we are also working um with uh, uh, Doug Tenapple, who is oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So he's the creator of Earthworm Jim. Yeah. Um. His his current. Uh, if you haven't read his current comics, Bigfoot, they're they're wonderful. Um. He's the he made a hundred a hundred. Uh, he was showrunner for a hundred episodes of Veggie Tales. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did Neverhood. If you remember that great mm-hmm. video game. Um. Uh, what else did he do, Marcus? Jurassic I'm missing Park something. Oh yeah, Jurassic Park on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so some of those really amazing <laughs> things that you, you know are, were formative for uh, people our age. 
Um, but he, so he's, he's, we've got him, um, making, uh, short cartoons for us. Um, and then I'm really excited to be, we have Chris Savino on our board. Um, he's the, uh, he, he, basically everything that was ever on Cartoon Network, he had his hand in. He was a producer of Powerpuff Girls, my gym partner's a monkey, um, Dexter's Laboratory, he was a creator of Loud House, uh, worked on Ren and Stimpy. I mean, the guy's been around forever. So he's on our um, he's on our board um, and is also making a, a cartoon for us called Busted Bible Stories that's in that uh, classic <laughs> fractured fairy tale style. Oh. Just wonderful. Just, that's you know, brilliant. One of those I, just makes you happy, yeah. So, I want to see but, that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, folks, the, the folks that we talk to and are getting to work with um, are incredibly talented, and they've just never been freed uh, to make the things that they want to make. They've always mm. um, had uh, to have to do what other people wanted, and we're trying to free them from that um, that cycle that goes and borrows money and gets it paid back and keeps a little mm. bit for themselves and goes and borrows money, gets it paid back, and ends up owning nothing at the end of the day. Um, mm. we, we want to change that, uh, for artists that are willing to take the risk and make the thing they want and, and connect directly with an audience. So you guys are the, the image comics of, uh, of Christian. That's a great media. analogy. Yes. That's a great absolutely. analogy. Yeah. Im- image comics, uh, or trauma, trauma films, dark horse <laughs> comics, all my favorite comics are dark horse comics personally so that's what i want to be is the dark horse <laughs> very cool um let's see oh, now now you talked about um people can can spend their loot to help support a particular creator a uh, particular i guess episode or a particular uh, movie um what kind of things will be available at launch yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. Interesting. Uh, so I would say the things that are available for launch is whatever the users decide to fund. Uh, the first users are going to be the ones that will be able to make the decisions for the first content that's streamed on the platform. Uh, however, uh, last year we did a beta, and during that beta we did fund two documentary series. Uh, okay. One is called Dark Collar, and Dark Collar is... Uh, Basically, like it's basically like a ghost hunting horror documentary hmm. uh, about demon possession that's taking place in West Virginia, um, and so it's basically uh, it's a it's a Christian documentary series about these testimony the, the, these people in West Virginia and their testimonies of being on drugs and 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 and, and demon possession and that sort of stuff. But it's shot in like a you know Discovery Channel ghost hunting style. Where they're looking in the you know in the abandoned building for sounds and noises and stuff like that, but they tie it into it's not ghosts, it's demon possession. And it's really amazing. The other ones teach all nations, which, which is just a standard theological documentary series on on uh, end times and current stuff, uh, not from your typical left behind sort of perspective. It's it's a unique take on that. Um, nice. And so. So, uh, so, so those are the two documentary series that you can subscribe and you can watch now. Um, Dark Holler for sure is is worth the cost of the subscription. Um, and then um, you, every week you get an email that says you have loot to spend, and you fund that loot, and you you'll see every week that progress bar mm-hmm. on a project goes up and up and up, and uh, you'll be able to uh, you'll you, you the, the more subscribers you get. The more we can fund, and the bigger productions we can do. Um, so it's 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 a game. Um, it's a game. We, you're starting now, and there's not a lot of monthly subscri- There's not a lot of monthly subscribers. The project totals are a lot smaller than the, your typical average production. But uh, once they're funded, they're streaming on the platform for every new subscriber. They have content to watch. So we call that inheritance. Um, so 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 the subscribers that come next year will have more content because of the subscribers that were the ones that were the early adopters. So it's a fun, okay. it's a fun way of, bu- but basically we're building your own streaming service from scratch from content one. So nice. So as you see what is being funded and what is not, how is that going to inform future decisions for 
you know, finding new con content creators or, or choosing new content to get listed? Well, we're always going to be having, we're always going to have two goals with content is to serve the people that we know are already there. Um, and then also to figure out how we can bring in new subscribers. So if we, we get a lot of requests for sci-fi and so we've gone out and found some sci-fi. We've got one called the Judas project. That is a fantastic sci-fi project about, um, a, a four babies that were, um, adopted by the federal government secretly. And then, um, on their 18th birthday are freed, um, and ha have to go figure out what happened to their childhoods. It's, yeah, um, and then we've got, uh, you know, another one called Tor that's about, uh, uh, multiverse, uh, multiverse cop detectives, you know, hunting bad mm -hmm. guys. So really, really fun stories that, um, and we've went and got those because the current subscribers said we want more sci-fi. And so I went hunting mm -hmm. for sci-fi and finding the, the Christian creators, um, that are looking to make sci-fi that maybe haven't had the chance because they have never been told that there's a there's Christian sci-fi de the desire for Christian sci-fi, which of course there is. We invented that genre with <laughs> John Milton invented Christian sci-fi. So um, absolutely. <laughs> so you've got uh, all you. Um, so we've got to serve our current customers. That's one of the things. But then we go looking for the sorts of things that other people won't make um, in order to. Mm -hmm. I, th I think a good example um, is Stranger Things. That was, began as um, somebody said, well, hey, there's a lot of people that play Dungeons and Dragons. Let's mm -hmm. make a TV show for them. And all the people, you know, if you were on Reddit when it first came out, then you know how excited the Dungeons and Dragons people were for a, mm -hmm. a TV show that saw that they existed. Right? Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was really fun. But that, and then it grew out beyond that, right? So we're also looking for the kinds of shows that we can um, have made that go get a, a smaller niche audience that doesn't normally get served. So somebody pitched to me Dungeons and Dragons the musical, which I'm really hoping we get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, right? It's a, um, it's fantastic. It's really great, you know. And, and you think, well, who's going to make Dungeons and Dragons the musical? Well, somebody that knows they can go find the Dungeons and Dragons audience. And say, mm -hmm. hey, we've got a show that doesn't talk down to you or treat you like you're crazy. Um, that 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 gets how much fun Dungeons and Dragons is, and tr and real and just treats you like you're normal. So we made a musical about you. Um, that so that is the other way that I think about finding new content. Is there an audience? Is there an audience that this is going to serve? Especially an audience that nobody else is serving right now. That's what I get excited about. Nice. So when. Now, you had told me before we started the call um, that uh, some of the content is already already done and ready. And just as soon as the funding is there, it will go live. And then some of it, once the funding is there, it'll go into production. So what does that kind of what does that kind of look like? Is there do you have some kind of balance there between the two or is most of the content made and ready or is most of the content uh, still to be made? We aim into it at a, about 50-50 with each wave, new wave of content. We try and do mm -hmm. about 50-50 so that we can get things funded and out there right away. But also that the people that don't wouldn't normally have access to the money um, can get access to an audience directly that says, mm -hmm. man, I want to give you money for that. Because if you serve an audience well, they're happy to give you money. That's the, <laughs> the reality when it comes to storytelling. So, I mean, I, I buy, I, you know, I buy my... Uh, all of my merchandise for the stories I love and, you know, and uh, get the new Hellboy comic every time it comes out, all of that, because I, I know that story is going to serve me every time. So it makes me happy to give the money. So that's what, that's what we're looking for. Nice. So Marcus, what does end of year one, cause you guys are, are, are literally launching. You might have just launched when this podcast releases, you may have just for launched sure. a few days before. What does success look like for you guys at the end of year one? I want to get 100,000 subscribers. If we can get 100,000 subscribers, we can fund TV shows that are a million dollars an episode. We can really start really pushing the limits as, in terms of the content and quality. 
Uh, but but I, I think I think too I would like to start doing lore film festivals and just really focusing on the independent unseen Christian artists um, and and then really just becoming I, I want to I want I want to have content on our platform that people actually talk about outside of uh, the small niche groups right like you know HBO the CEO of HBO once said it doesn't matter how many people watch Game of Thrones. It matters how many people talk about Game of Thrones, right? Because mm-hmm. that's how you change the culture, right? Like that's how um, you influence uh, people through media and narrative. It's not by mm-hmm. putting a preachy altar call scene at the end of your movie, uh, which, by the way, the left is doing with global warming and all that other, other sort of stuff now on every show, <laughs> right? Um, so, so everybody does it. Uh, so that's not special. Um, what's special is whether or not your content is resonating to a degree that people that that uh, 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 pop is making characters of your TV shows. Um, mm. That's that's the real goal, I think, is how do we become influential in such a way that kids are asking for, you know, teddy bears where they can decapitate and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> so that's that's what we that's what I want to see. Barely biblical lunchboxes with the enemies of God dead on them. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh my goodness. Well, a um, homeschooler doesn't want to go walk into their co op with that lunchbox. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, I had a question on my mind, and that completely, I've gone. It's gone. It's gone now. It's completely gone. Um, now you mentioned, um, you mentioned, you know, sci-fi was something a lot of people were asking for and, uh, that you, you've been on the hunt for it. Um, is there a particular genre, particular area that you feel like, um, is, is an area of, of interest uh, other than sci-fi? Cause we already mentioned that one. Is there a particular area you're looking into right now? that you you feel like is out there but you you're not finding what uh, you think the audience is going to connect with i mean yeah we we have been able to find some some great uh folks working in comedy and in drama and in horror horror um it's been hard to find sci-fi uh and fantasy and i mm-hmm. think that's just because um christians have uh mistakenly in my mind um uh, been told that uh, those are, those genres aren't for us, even though we invented those genres. Um, so uh, fantasy is another one, um, it, it, and because it can be expensive um, mm. to make. And so uh, a lot of Christian filmmakers, they've gotten really, really talented in the lower budgets. Um, and mm. so we're hoping to build up to be able to give you a great show about dragons where everyone gets a complete set of clothing and they never take them off in front of you. You know, that, <laughs> um, so I would love um, to do, and the, that has a, you know, the, the, the biggest problem with game of Thrones isn't the nudity. It's the view of the, that the world is all power and only power and there's mm-hmm. no more honor and there's no more self-sacrifice. And you know, mm-hmm. I, I, that's what is great about um, a, a lot of the traditional fantasy is it reminds us that we have a higher calling than just getting as much power as possible. That we have a, you know, the, the, the medieval knights took a vow to protect all women for a reason, you know? Um, so uh, that I, I would love to find um, some great fantasy uh, at this point. And then, you know, when people ask me what the greatest, um, what the, what the best uh, Christian movie ever made is, I always say the first Hellboy movie. Um, I think that's, <laughs> uh, I would love to have our own comic, um, book movies, right. Our own mm. hero movies, those sorts of things that, um, not, not because we want to rival in, you know, rival in a bad sort of way, but because, um, those genres are set up really well to, mm-hmm. to, um, form the kinds of people, uh, that love what is good. Um, and that's what a, the early comic books did that so well in the early comic book movies mm-hmm. um, outside of maybe Howard the duck all did that really well. Um, so I would, I, I would love uh, to, to nail down some comic genres uh, as well. Very nice. That, those, those moral stories with uh, biblical principles that. Uh, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, absolutely. But just, just show how beautiful good morality is. Because good morality is a beautiful thing when you see it, right? When you see somebody, mm-hmm. when you see Iron Man laying down his life for the world. That you know, you. It, I mean, I took my kids to all those movies and watched them well up um, at how mm-hmm. beautiful it is to watch somebody sacrifice themselves. Um, you know, I, the uh, this is this was um, the problem with the boys. Right is mm-hmm. is they wanted a a world with all of the powers and all the beauty of the powers without a moral center and mm-hmm. um, it it it's uh, soul destroying um, because it's so disappointing to see something so beautiful um, used for apathy. It's not even used for evil. It's used for apathy, which is I think far worse. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan when the bad guy's the bad guy and the good guy's the bad guy. Right, exactly, exactly. And that's Game of Thrones, that's The Boys, and a lot of things are pushing that way. Um, mm. And I think all it's not it's not hard to be a light when it's this dark around, you know? You just, Absolutely. So, so that's what I'm uh, excited about, is to find those storytellers that just love what's good. And so you don't have to give them a bunch of rules and things to avoid, because they love um, how beautiful good and good goodness is and truth is and you get to just release them from the uh the handcuffs of uh, the hollywood mafia nice well what does it look like to subscribe what if somebody is listening right now they're interested what do they do where do they go what's it cost what's this look like <laughs> yeah so you go to lore.tv l-o-o-r dot tv uh, you create an account. It's fourteen dollars a month, and most of that money is just your your funding content um, for fourteen bucks a month. And then uh, that fourteen dollars a month uh, lets you get you loot every week. And then uh, eventually we'll have the ability to buy more loot to fund projects faster. In, in the next coming mm-hmm. weeks, we'll be able to have that ability. Um, and then uh, every every week your loot expires. So every Tuesday you'll get an email that says, hey, you got more loot to spend. What project do you want to fund? You fund your project. And then eventually, as you'll, you'll start to see it. Like each week as subscribers invite more subscribers, you'll get bonus loot for inviting more subscribers and stuff like that. And then as that happens, uh, a project will start to get funded. And you'll, there'll be content to watch. And it happens very quickly. Um, it's it's really exciting to watch. Um, it's sort of a, a, it's sort of avalanches. We did it a, a a beta about a year ago, and we went from zero to three thousand users and funded two documentary series in like five to six weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. So it sounds crazy, but it's actually exactly how streaming platforms typically work: is they take a percentage of everyone's monthly subscription and they fund content with it um and so mm-hmm. the only difference is you're doing it from scratch from day one on the streaming platform so you get to decide which content that's right so yeah when when i as a user want to fund something um with my loot do do i choose one thing and fund all of you know all my all my loot goes to that one thing or right. am i able to spread that loot across multiple things what's that look like you can, you can spread it across multiple uh m- multiple projects or you can throw it all at one it's all it's totally up to you okay great um anything else somebody might want to know you know if they're they're considering it uh you know they're they're browsing the website uh, any last things that somebody should know before they decide to sign up I mean, I, th- I think the biggest thing is um, the it's it's time for us to stop just complaining and criticizing and get around to creating, and uh, the this is the the way I think um, to do it. Um, we we want to see better stuff made, and um, this is the opportunity. I'm, I mean, that's why I got involved as I was tired of the the content that um, was was representing me as a Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 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 um, this, this is the way Uber upset the taxi industry is by giving people direct access to one another. And we're trying to do that same thing so we can upset the, the balance of powers and take down the empire. I mean, come join the rebel Alliance. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you mentioned lore.tv L O O R.tv. Um, where can people follow you? Uh, other than the website, where where can people find more information 
and just kind of keep up with uh, the release date. Um, we're assuming based on our recording time that it will already be available by the time this yeah. launches. But yeah. just in case, um, where can people follow you guys? Uh, if you go to t if Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, it's watch, uh, W-A-T-C-H, lore, L-O-O-R. So okay. if you do those social media handles, that'll get you our Twitter uh, and Facebook page. You're probably the most active. And then on YouTube as well. So if you want to watch cool. some of the trailers and stuff, you can go to YouTube. Nice. I will definitely put uh, uh, that information and links down in the show notes below. So you guys check those out. Um, Marcus, Jason, it has been amazing having you on the Christian Urge Unite podcast today. Thanks, thanks so much for, thanks having, for us. having us. This has been great. I am I'm super excited about their project. It was great getting to know Marcus and Jason. If you're interested in subscribing or want to follow them, go check out the links down in the show notes below. Well, that's all I have for you today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, you know, just click all those links down there, whatever they are, uh, so that you can keep up with us whenever we release new content. You can find all of our social links and links to our YouTube channel and our online store at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. If you enjoy the show and want to help even more, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. We've changed all of our Patreon levels, and every level has great benefits and makes a huge difference in the ministry we're able to do. Supporters will also get to hear exclusive stories of believers we're serving around the world through our ministry partners. To check it out or to partner with us, go to patreon.com slash christiannerdsunite or christiannerdsunite.com and click on support in the menu. And don't forget to check out christiannerdhq.com for more great podcasts. Before I go, I do want to leave you with this blessing from 1 Thessalonians 5. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. We'll see you next week. Blessings. Hey.